So, hello everyone. My name is uh, Turian Daniel, uh, and welcome to this Mikotik user meeting in Bucharest. It's been four years since the last user meeting we had here in Bucharest, that Mikotik had here in Bucharest. It was in 2014, and now, uh, after four years, uh, we are here again. My presentation will be about uh, Mikrotik Router S IPsec VPN, having the Radius client configured, and uh, querying the Active Directory user account database using the network policy server role configured on the, on the server. A few words about myself. Uh, I have more than 18 years experience in uh, information technology. I've been working for, uh, for uh, Northern Networks as a beta tester in, since 2007 and, uh, until uh, 2010. I also acquired this uh, Cisco CCNA certification in 2013. And since 2012, um, I'm uh, directly involved in configuring and uh, delivering Microtech solutions to, to my customers. Uh, currently, I am certified for MTCRE. Uh, MTCWE, MTCTCE, and IPv6E. In 2016, I have uh, acquired the uh, trainer certificate number 364 and started uh, uh, micro training as SRL. Uh, micro training delivers uh, consultancy on a variety of, uh, of topics, micro tech topics. And also, we are a certified trainer for, for the certifications that I've mentioned before. Uh, this agenda for this presentation will cover general information about IPsec implementation in a Microtik Router S operating system, general information regarding uh, Radius client implementation in Microtik Router S. Uh, we'll focus also on the configuration part on, uh, on Microtech IPsec. We'll also deal with the uh, specific IPsec uh, firewall settings. Then we will configure uh, Microsoft uh, Windows Server 2016 with uh, the NPS role uh, included. This will be uh, considered that micro router S is already configured for basic networking, as, and also the server, the Microsoft uh, Windows uh, Server 2016, is already uh, having the, uh, the uh, Active Directory role configured, just for the sake of uh, uh, be able to, to discuss this in this uh, window. We also configured the shoes of VPN software for client road warriors. And also the uh, Android mobile part, which will be, as for this presentation, cover the Android uh, 5 version. But there is no big differences for the newer versions. Why IPsec? IPsec is a security standard for transferring sensitive data over untrusted networks. Uh, it is also U.S. Department of Defense standard for security. It has the greatest and the most effective, let's say, encryption, encryption strength. We can also prevent many attacks using, uh, using uh, IPsec. I'm not referring to IPsec as only IPsec, because any tunnel is better than nothing. So we can use, we can prevent data theft in traffic, we can prevent uh, credential sniffing, and we can also prevent some network-based attacks. What IPsec can provide, provides confidentiality, integrity, and authentication. It is also cross-vendor capable because of uh, 
uh, open standard, IETF. And why? Because the new GDPR uh, greatly imposes us to, to, to make sure that data is not tampered with or stolen in transit. Because GDPR asks for privacy by design. It's critical. So IPsec represents a set of protocols defined by Internet Engineering Task Force to provide secure transport means of sensitive data over untrusted networks. From point A to point B, I need to transfer a set of files or I'm trying to access an unsecured authentication mode. So it is better if I can tunnel that traffic and encrypt that traffic along the path in order to minimize the impact of, uh, of uh, data theft or uh, credential sniffing. Can be divided in three categories. So we have the Internet Key Exchange, which provides the authentication key material for the Internet Security Association and Key Management Protocol Framework. Uses UDP 500. The second part would be authentication header, which is uh, starting to, to, to decrease in popularity because it cannot provide uh, encryption, usually provides authentication and integrity. And it's not, also it is not NAT compatible because it actually hashing the entire packet header plus payload. So after the NAT process, the NAT will change the source IP address and that will render the authentication header as invalid and the IPsec tunnel will fail to establish. And then we have the security, the encapsulation security payload, sorry, which is RFC 4303 for the request from common documentation, which indeed provides confidentiality and authentication, but also provides integrity by encrypting the payload. But what is most important, it leaves the IP header intact, okay, for surviving through NAT. It leaves the IP header intact in, uh, in NAT traversal configuration because of the IP protocol 50, which is a portless protocol. So again, cannot traverse NAT, but has a, uh, a workaround. What we are doing, we are taking the UDP uh, we are taking the, the, uh, the ESP and we encapsulate it in a NAT traversal UDP for 4,500 in order to be able to pass through the NAT process. Because NAT always takes a translation between the source address, destination address, port source and destination, uh, uh, and, uh, and the destination port. So we really need somehow or some tool or some, 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 uh, some technology in order to be able to track that IP in our uh, connection tracking system. I will not go into deep uh, discussions for, for, uh, for IPsec because for IPsec there are entire books written already. It's more than 20 years ago when the technology was developed. In fact, Windows 2000 had the IPsec already embedded in the uh, in, um, server. It is combined by two, two main parts, two phases. This is how actually the tunnel gets established. So we have a phase one where I key peers agree and settles on the key material in order to derive the keys for the security associations. And then we have the phase two, the IPsec, the Internet Security Association Key Management Protocol, which uh, furthermore creates the tunnel between the peers using one or more security associations. That will be different, we will see at a later stage, that uh, uh, either unique or required can create one SA, one security association, or multiple security associations for each TCP stream. 
For the phase one, we have our theistication method. We can set the Diffie-Hellman group. We then go into the encryption algorithm, the exchange mode, which uh, in our case it's main, but it's main in passive mode because the router OS will only listen for, for connections, will not establish connections because it is a site to which we are connecting as a road warriors. So we have our uh, VPN client on the computer, on the laptop, or on our phones, on our mobiles, and yeah, we are the ones that are initiating the IKE traffic, okay? We do have the NAT traversal that we, are, we will use because we need it. We have the dead peer detection options and lifetime, and on the second phase, we have the IPC protocol, which will be ESP, because like I said earlier, authentication header is not compatible through NAT. So we need encapsulation security payload. We have our authentication method. We have again the perfor forward secrecy, if you want to use it, is not mandatory, but is recommended. We are not going to use it because we are trying to, to, to cover also uh, Road Warrior set up for the Windows client, for the um, Shrew client. And we also want to cover the mobile part, which for the moment does not support uh, perfor forward secrecy. And we do have our lifetime settings for the phase two. As a short note, also RouterOS supports uh, IKE v2. There are some improvements in IKE v2 compared to, to IKE v1. I uh, will see later about uh, the modifications. So this is a small picture on how IPsec actually works. In our scenario, it is a site-to-site. -site. Uh, the scenario is particularly only to this uh, um, specific slide, not our setup. We do have two routers. The tunnel will be established between those two routers and on their local area networks, we have the clients. This is a site-to-site -site configuration channel. So it will work like this. Actually, host A wants to start some sending traffic towards, towards the host B. This will be considered as interesting traffic because this traffic will start and generate the IKE process. So router A behind, uh, host A, sorry, behind router A will start sending interesting traffic to host B, which generates the start for the IKE phase one. IKE phase one will negotiate uh, between A and B routers. If the IKE phase one session is established, then IKE phase two will start uh, generating traffic for the IPsec, for the ISA KMP, phase two. And if phase two also uh, negotiates successfully, we should have a uh, security association successfully established between those two routers, and traffic will be passing through and encrypted between host A and host B, and the other way around. What is very important to mention is that IPsec, it's direct, di direction based. So we will have two essays actually. One essay is for the direction for router A to router B, and the other security association will be in reverse direction from router B to router A. This is our encapsulation security payload part, and the differences between the transport mode and the Talon mode in uh, encapsulation security payload. So actually, the transport mode covers only the payload and the ESP trailer, which in tunnel mode takes the initial IP header payload, of course, and the ESP trailer. The difference is that tunnel mode can create tunnels for entire subnets, not only uh, one particular host. You see, it actually adds a new IP header on top of the initial payload. This can be transported across uh, across uh, routers. 
Some of the encryption techniques available in uh, RouteRS IPsec, we do have MD5, Message Digest 5, which is considered as obsolete on the authentication part. We do have uh, uh, SHA-1, which is somewhat obsolete. It's still valid because it gives great encryption straight. And of course, we do have the recommended mode of uh, of authentication for the SHA-2, uh, 256 or 512 page strength. For the encryption, we have the same as obsolete uh, uh, DES and 3DS, which are, uh, I think they are stopped using it since, I don't know, a few years ago. Um, very few, very few customers, st they still have uh, older encryption techniques and most of the time is due to having all the equi equipment in the network which cannot be decommissioned or some cost-related thing, uh, motives, so it's difficult to, to, to replace them. Of course, we have AAS128, then 256 bit keys for the cipher block chaining. Also, we can enable Blowfish encryption, two-fish encryption, and Camellia from 128-bit until 256-bit to to key. Blowfish, two-fish, and Camellia are not so popular for, uh, for mainstream brands, but uh, they bring also great encryption strength. Most of the time is either SHA-1 or SHA-2, SHA with uh, AAS uh, as encryption strength. A few uh, words about uh, IKE differences. For the IKE version one, we can see that we have uh, a greater impact, let's say, on the networking and the devices itself and the bandwidth available in order to establish the tunnel. So we do have nine messages in main mode until the, uh, the tunnel gets successfully established compared to the IKE version two, which can bring the tunnel up on the only in four messages. Uh, we do have six messages in aggressive mode <laughs> as a workaround, but can pose some security risks, unfortunately. On the other hand, on IKE version 2, we have no exchange mode. It's only main mode, only default mode, because they wanted to have it a simpler version, a more, more functional version. Also, the peer part is enforced on the IKE version 1, uh, but the IKE version 2 does not say anything about uh, lifetimes. We can have different lifetimes between peers on IKE v1, this is not possible. Also, we can delete the security association at any time by exchanging delete message payloads, oh, but this is only valid for IKE v2. Uh, what we are also covering in our presentation, we do have uh, router S IPsec with mode config and extended authentication, but this is generally vendor specific. There is no uh, documentation on the IAT fee within IPsec for IKE v1, but IKE v2 brings this, uh, this improvement because it is actually embedded in protocol itself using extensible authentication protocol, EAP. So it is already the standard, let's say. Usually, uh, remote access VPN with mode config and extensible authentication brings some, uh, some tweaks. We will see that uh, about in the later, uh, later slides. We do need to, in to enable simple PAP for the moment, for example, password authentication protocol. And also, we must make sure that uh, the server, the Active Directory is configured, the, the machine is configured to store the passwords using reversible encryption. So this could pose some, uh, uh, let's say, minor security risks, but let's discuss that, considering that is the server. Once you have access to that server and you can run sniffing software, then uh, 
it has almost no security. We can connect the server direct to one port of the sway of the of the router of the main router, so it will be like one to one traffic. We can either create a static static record for the MAC address. So there are some workarounds available. Uh, this is how it looks on the uh, packet flow diagram in router OS. Because, for example, on encryption, we have the traffic that is entering in the pre-routing chain. It will go through the routing decision. It will go to the chain of forward. It will go to post-routing. Then we have the IPsec policy algorithm which asks, do I have an IPsec policy? This traffic gets interested. Do I need to encrypt it? If yes, go to the encryption engine, encrypt the traffic, again, routing decision, output, because the traffic is destined for the destination network but is encrypted actually, goes again to the post routing, again to IPsec policy, IPsec policy is already applied, so it will go to, to, to outside. When the traffic is returning to the router and needs decryption, it will enter the same in the pre-routing engine in the pre-routing chain. It will go to routing decision. We will see that first there are some IKE messages because we need to initiate the the uh, tunnel establishment. It will go to input because this is router destined traffic. Even actually, it's host destined, but destination is only after decryption. Okay, we are applying the IPsec policy. We are going back to IPsec decryption engine. The, the, the dif different ones for, for, for the uh, IPsec encryption engine. We will decrypt the messages. We will reach the pre-routing pre -routing, uh, chain again. Go into routing decision. And then we can go to forward after the messages were successfully decrypted and security established the security association was uh, successfully established. Then it goes to post routing, then to IPsec policy. We don't have IPsec policy because we already have it, but for the decryption part, it will go to the host again. So in this part, we are encrypting the traffic. In the other part, we are decrypting the traffic based on the uh, uh, provided diagrams. By the way, thanks to MicroT because those two diagrams are directly from their uh, manual page. It's very nice because they they were also numbered and this huge improvement compared to the older uh, traffic diagrams for the uh, for the packet flow in route OS. Few words about the Radius client. Radius stands for Remote Authentication Dial In User Service. So it's actually an engine which can ask another um, entity, another software component for the authentication process. If that uh, entity provides authentication process as successful in terms of user and password, then it pushes the message back to, 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 the, route, uh, to the Radius client and the Radius client decides to permit uh, the traffic. Standard implementation in Microtech Router OS RFC 2865. Also, it supports PPP, hotspot, wireless, and uh, rather recently, IPsec has an authentication mean for the Radius client. Uh, we do have some limitations as for the moment, sorry, due to the password authentication protocol mode which is only the one supported for the Radius IPsec part. If, for example, you are using Radius client for other uh, services, it will also accept to uh, Microsoft CHAP version 2 or uh, Microsoft CHAP, CHAP version 1. Also, for the Windows 2016 uh, server, we need to have the networking policy server role configured and to be in password authentication protocol mode. So we will cover two aspects. 
server must have the role configured in pub, pub mode and also the Active Directory server must uh, store the passwords using reversible encryption. This is how it looks, our setup. So here is considered as the internet part. Here is the border router which runs the IPsec gateway. And here is our corporate LAN with the switch with the hosts are not de um, designed here, but it, there is a switch and we have the Active Directory server on the 10.170.10.1. The first step would be to create an IPsec pool that will be later used in the configuration of our, uh, our uh, uh, IPsec implementation. We'll go to IPsec, we'll go to pool, we will name it conveniently, I named it Warriors just to have a clear reference. It will be from 10, 1, 7, 0, 2, 0, 100 until 110, so only 10 customers are uh, permitted to use this tunnel concurrently. On step two, we need to configure the Road Warrior group that will later be used in the policy template. We are going to IPsec, groups, create the Road Warrior named group using the plus sign. Uh, by the way, the IPsec menu is in IP IPsec as a, um, as a position to, from where we can access it. The step three will be to configure the template because we, de we, we do need the template and that is because we are not aware of the IP address that the client will use to connect to our uh, VPN gateway. So we need to have a template that actually will generate the, the IPsec policy when everything uh, uh, is agreed in terms of uh, phase one and phase two. Okay, so we are putting the source address here, destination address here. We are creating as a template using the group that we have created earlier. On the step four, we are dealing with the IPsec policy, the actual IPsec policy, which as you see, it has zero source and destination addresses in order to generate the, the the, um, the traffic. We'll go for the proposals, the proposal using the step five of our uh, laboratory. We will actually edit the default one. We can create as many as we wish, but we are going for the default one. We just configured as SHA-1, AAS-128 one, one, one to Cypher block chaining, and we set the lifetime for for uh, for one day. Okay, we will have, like I said, SHA-1, encryption AS-128 cipher block chaining and lifetime of uh, one hour, sorry. Next will be the step six of our presentation. The same for peer profiles this time we will edit the default one, not to create a new another one. We can do that if we have different uh, uh, setup for the different IPsec tunnels. We will specify the hash algorithm as SHA-1. We will go for the encryption algorithm as uh, uh, the same AAS-128. We'll go for the Diffie-Hellman group of uh, modulo P1024. Uh, uh, which is actually the Diffie-Hellman Group 2 from the standard documentation. Other brands are referring to Diffie-Hellman Groups. Microtech prefers to have the actual uh, uh, bit number. We will check the lifetime of one day for the, for, the, for the phase one encryption settings. We'll make sure that disable the dead peer detection because we are not using it. And on the next slide, we can see that the peer general 
the same source address is the fourth address. We keep the profile that we have created earlier, pre-shared key with extended authentication, exchange mode main, and passive. We have our secret here, our pre-shared key that we will later use. Okay, IPsec Road Warrior, the same for the peers. Port strict, this is the mode configuration we have created. In the next slide here, IPsec Road Warrior as a responder mode. When this is the split include, actually this is a destination that we need to reach through the channel. So it's 10.170.10.0. Here we have the check mark on the users for the extended authentication. And here we have the same general IPsec, the address settings and the secret. Those are our firewall chaining rules because we need to accept the input destination port 500 and input destination port for uh, 4500. And then for the Windows Server part, we need to configure the add roles and features using the, uh, the uh, Server Manager. We are opening from Manage, Add Role and Features. We are accepting the role-based and feature-based installation configuration mode. We are selecting the server, actually our domain server. We'll go for the network policy and access services. We check that mark and we go to next. This is the same next because we are not adding features, we are adding roles. And then we need to make sure that the default domain policy is actually providing the encryption has a store password in reversible mode enabled. We go to VPN test local using the group policy management, snap in. We go to linked group policy objects, edit the default domain policy, and on Windows settings, security settings, authentication policies, password policy, we see here the store password using reversible as encryption and uh, sorry as enabled. We then need to go to Active Directory in order to create a new user group for our uh, users that are needed to access to the remote uh, VPN uh, tunnel. So we go to Active Directory. We click on New under the users uh, uh, container, New Group. We will name the group as VPN users for our later references. We keep the security as global, the group scope as global, sorry, and the security type, the group type as security. We have here added our user account, which is actually the domain user account, the admin, the administrator of the, of the Windows domain server. We are going to Tools, Network Policy Server, in order to have the Network Policy Server configured. And here, we go to Radius Clients, click New. We need to make sure that the address of the uh, IP uh, server is actually the address of the, uh, of the uh, internal network of the Microtik router, okay? We will place the secret this, sec this shared secret which will be uh, exactly as the one we have uh, to configure on the, on the Microtik on the Radius client page. Then for the network policies, in the same NPS server, network policy server, we will name the policy, the policy name as IPsec. We will go for VPN users as a selected group in order to be able to, to, to remotely connect to the VPN machines. So using the groups, we will then add, add the group, select for the group in step three, 
And this step four will select the group that we have created earlier, VPN users. It should be with access granted. And like I said, the, extension, the, the password authentication protocol must be enabled, unencrypted password. Then we have the common use for dial-in user VPN, which is like we have discussed in the ESP mode, encapsulation security payload mode, for the, for the tunnel type on the standard settings of the Radius client, on the Radius uh, um, uh, configuration for the server. If we are agree with the settings, so policy user groups, our conditions with password authentication protocol, with grant access and ESP for the tunnel mode. We also need to make sure that the connection request is enabled in order to have the, the authentication process to actually happen on this uh, Active Directory server. And we need to make sure as well that network policy server is successfully registered in the Active Directory. Then we can continue for the uh, Shrewsoft uh, VPN software client part. Actually, this is a very good uh, free software if you are installing it in standard edition. You can go for the professional edition, but it mm, uh, requires a license. So we will go for the standard edition. There are only a few differences that they can permit to authentication through the um, Active Directory integrated uh, means but it's again vendor dependent. So here we need to general, uh, on the general tab, we need to add a profile, point the profile to the actual, uh, to the actual server where the, uh, our MicroTik router, using the local host as uh, an adapter mode, any, uh, any virtual adapter that has an IP address assigned. For the client part, we will select the NAT traversal mode in order to be able to pass through the uh, through the NAT engine. We'll keep the IT fragmentation as disabled. On the uh, authentication tab, we we'll have three sub tabs for the local identity, for the remote identity, and for the credentials for the mutual pre-shared key with XOUT using the pre-shared key from the MicroTik IPsec settings. Okay, careful that this should also match to our step seven from the router S configuration part regarding IPsec settings. On the phase one, we have the uh, phase one settings, which like we have uh, uh, saw in the, in the phase one configuration from MicroTik. We need the exchange mode as main. We keep the difficult on this group well, uh, group, group two, because we have uh, uh, mod 1024 bits. We keep the cipher algorithm that's AAS with 128 and having the hash algorithm as SHA-1. For the phase two, we will have the same ESP AAS with 128 bits with hash algorithm as SHA-1. And of course, our life uh, time for the one hour and for one day for the phase one. Our last tab from the VPN part, from the software client, is the unique uh, uh, policy generation level, which uh, we should keep to either require or unique. Require means uh, it will actually uh, create one SR required for the traffic to, to pass encrypted and the unique will create each security association per, per each substream, per each TCP substream. So if you have three or four traffic types that are passing through the tunnel, it will actually create multiple ones using the unique uh, policy generation level. Our last but not least is the, the mobile VPN client, which is included in Android. This was for the version uh, five. So we only go to settings on more. We need to access the VPN uh, button. 
we will name it for our later references. We will keep the type as uh, IPsec extended authentication with pre-shared key. Point to the actual IP address of our, of our server, of our MicroTIG router. And of course, we need the IPsec pre-shared key. This is our setup, like, like on earlier, when we have seen it. So traffic will go from, from the client toward the server. The server will ask the Windows 2016 server for the MPS role authentication. In case uh, user and password are correct and the same, uh, the same is valid also for the IPsec pre-shared key, it will actually uh, give the client uh, successful authentication mean and will generate the encryption traffic and create the tunnel. Thank you. Any questions, please?